Hey guys, just going to do a, a little quick video here. Um, one of the guys asked me, they said they're having a problem with the uh, muskrats knocking the traps off their floats. Now, I'm um, not sure why that would be happening, but I know if you have, you know, because the muskrats, they're going to come along here and swim and climb up here instead of climbing up on top of this. So if you have your, your trap hanging over the edge, now that they're going to, you know, sometimes do that. Um, I don't know if it's using, if maybe the person's using two by fours, but I always use a two by six and pretty much the only traps I use are the one and a halfs or the number twos because they sit a lot more steady on these boards. But you see this one moves around a little bit. Number one, you know, it should sit fairly steady too. Like I said, and, and you know, another thing that could be happening if you've got your trap like set like this where the chain is in the middle I always put it so that it's back here and the chain is right down from there so rats aren't pulling on it from here but another thing is I generally have this here area this here covered with like uh, weeds stuff like that and some uh, a little bit on top it, it should hold it pretty steady but what I'm going to do is just show you a few different ways you can keep the the uh, trap steady on there. So we'll uh, I'll, I'll use this one. I'm just gonna I'll do that one real quick here. Actually, I'll just, I'll just shut the camera off for a sec, and uh, and then I'll get all the stuff I need to to make that set, and we can go from there. Okay. All right. Okay. So. Here we got the uh, the lid from a, just an ordinary can. This is from a can of niblets corn. Now what I'm doing is I'm just going to trim it down here so it's not quite so big. Just a pair of tin snips. Everybody's probably got a pair of them around. And then what you're going to do is. You're going to figure out where you want your trap set all the time and then put it in that position like so. So now you know right about where you're going to want it. Take the trap out of there. For stuff like this, I like roofing nails. Okay, I'm just going to hammer that in there. So I've got it hammered in. Now you're not going to want to hammer it all the way down. So now when you put your trap in here, you can just slide it under there. If you want it a little tighter, just hammer it down farther. And just you only do on one side of these. Now that's going to stop it from getting pushed around too much. Um, I'm going to hammer it one more time down here. Okay, so now you've got, like so. Now that's going to hold it. A rat's going to get caught, and it's going to come out of there pretty easy, like so. But he's not going to just pull it off by farting around with it. Okay, so that's one method. Another method is just by putting a... Put a roofing nail. See, there's two roofing nails there. And you see how they just sit there? Now they hold that fairly steady too. And once again, when it springs, takes no wiggling to get that out of there and you just shove it back in there like that and you're good to go okay now I'm gonna just do another one real quick here what you do with this okay take a piece of plywood you're gonna end up cutting it the same size as the is the opening here so I'll just marker there marker there and you're gonna trim it down 
for the same width as the 2x6. And I will go inside, trim that down, and then come back out and show you what I'm going to do with it. Actually, while I'm here, I might as well do this part, and then I don't have to come back out and do the cutting. So you got your trap like so. Now you're going to just draw the outline of the trap on here. Here you're going to be to the edge, so you don't have to go past that. Okay. Okay, so you pretty much got the edge of the the outline of the trap cut draw it in there and we'll uh, go in and cut it out and then and okay so here you go you can see another way you take a piece of the wood see this here trap it cannot get out of there no how okay you've got the piece here holding here holding here holding can't you can go a little bit sideways can't go backwards at all can't come forwards okay so something gets caught and it just pulls it out of there like nothing. And your other option is like there is on some of the videos. Now I don't have my router here right now, but I wouldn't do it right into this one. You, you could though, because this is an inch and a half thick board. Now what you might want to do is to set your router down a boat. I wouldn't go more than a half an inch because you want to leave an inch of wood there just for the strength so it doesn't rot out. Put your trap where you're going to want it to be sitting all the time. Take your pencil, draw, just outline your trap, like so, and just remember guys, I mean, these are muskrat stretchers, it's not rocket science and it's not finishing work in a, a house or anything. But if you're a perfectionist like I am not, then by all means spend the time you want to take to do it. That's what we all do. I'm not overly fussy. But so now you've got this. Set your router down half, three quarters of an inch or so. Remember you don't need to get this level because you're going to build this up with grass and weeds already, right? If you're just trying to stabilize your trap, put her down a half, three quarters of an inch. This will sit right in there. It won't move around. It won't fall off. Um, I, I myself have not had a problem with rats pulling them. You know, I've got ten different um, rat floats that I've, I've tried. And for me, it's just always the easiest to make is what I use. It may not be the most productive, but I always go by how much time it takes to, to build the things. Um, you know, the I've the most problem I've had with with traps falling off is from wave action. If you're in too big a water, and it doesn't even have to be too big a water. So, you know, you get a wind like howling today, as you can hear, and. Uh, it doesn't take much of a pond to have enough waves to knock these traps right off their their perch. So if you've got something like that holding it in, that's all that much better. Um, and like I said, on these here traps, your other option is take a, a Connie Bear holder or you can take something like this. Just hang on a sec and I'll hammer this in. Actually, I'm just going to shut it off for a second and go grab a Connie Bear, okay? Okay, so 
like I said, in, if I was in an area that had a lot of muskrats, you know, I might put a foot trap on each side of these, or each end of these floats, and then put a cony bear in the middle. A little bit of bait here, or scent, bait over there, you know, and then put another one sitting right here. You can hold, attach these with either Connie Bear holder you know, that you buy at a store. Or I like the roofing nails because they go in and out real easy. They're not spiral. They go in. They got a big head on them to hold the Connie Bears. Like this, you, like this trap is not going anywhere. It doesn't go sideways. If you if you put them too narrow like this. They're, and they're not as stable. They'll turn a little bit, especially with these Connie bears with the high curves in them. You get it right to the end, and those things are in there solid. So that's the other option for them. So, anyways, the you know, like I, I said, to her, this is for DJ Hunter. He asked me how I put them on there. Like I said, I generally don't have a problem other than with waves with the trap being knocked off or if you leave the chains hanging like that. So I always have the trap set like this with the chain hanging straight down there and attached underneath where I do all the, where I attach all the, the traps. So. Alrighty. Like I said, you can put up to four traps on here if you're in a good populated area and you you can't check them every day but I myself don't have that kind of muskrat population so it'd be kind of a waste of traps so anyways hope that helps you out there DJ and uh, we'll uh, see you guys down the trail